Hey, Mr. Tile. How are you, Armin? I'm here. <laughs> good to see you again. Thank you. I'm all ready for you over here. You're looking good. Thank you, Ron. I made the mock-up for you. You know, when you called me and said you had a way of putting ceramic tile directly on top of vinyl, I said, I got to see this. Well, Ron, I'm here to prove it to you today. Now, you were here a while back. You showed us how to put uh, ceramic tile on top of plastic laminate, a countertop in that case. Now, this, this is a similar process, but in this case, we're putting it over a vinyl floor. Regardless of the surface, Ron, as long as it comes from a tree or it's made by man, regardless of what it is, except carpeting, upholstery, and the human body, we can tile on it. All right. There are two key components to Armin's tiling system. One is this adhesive that's applied directly to the face of the vinyl floor tile. The second component is a non-woven synthetic fabric Armin calls thin skin. It's laid on top, then pressed firmly into the adhesive using either a trowel or a wallboard joint knife. The adhesive sticks to the vinyl flooring and the fabric bonds to the glue. Next, standard thin set cement is mixed up. Armin says it should end up being the consistency of ketchup. It's then troweled onto the fabric in a level, even coat. It'll dry in about a half an hour or so. Well, I'd say you've got what looks and feels like a, a cement surface here. We actually created a thin underlayment layer. It's probably less than a 32nd of an inch. So we didn't raise the floor. We didn't use any nails or screws. And we didn't add any weight. Now a second, heavier coat of thinset will be applied on top of the first. Armin uses the smooth edge of the trowel to spread the cement. Then he changes to the notch side and, holding the tool at a steep angle, creates parallel ridges that are all the same height. Now this will ensure that there's an even coating beneath each tile and no low spots or voids that might cause tiles to break or crack later on. Now watch closely. At first, Armin sets the tiles so the edges actually touch each other. Then he wiggles each tile just a bit while gently pulling it away from its neighbor. The wiggling ensures good contact with the cement below. The touching, then pulling away, keeps the joints clean and free of excess cement. Now after three decades of tiling, Armin has come up with a couple of inventions to save time and improve results, like this easy to grip tile spacer, one side is for intersecting joints, and the other keeps the edges evenly spaced. Around the perimeter or wherever you don't have a four-corner intersection. There you go, Ron. Beat them in. Okay, now, question. We already pushed these down and wiggled them correct, around. Correct. What's the purpose then of going back with the mallet? Insurance to pop out any remaining air. And that's your next step. And here's invention number two. No, it's not a hockey puck. I hear that sound, Ron. Uh, what does that tell you? The sound of a uh, high uh, tile, right? What we call a toe kicker. A toe kicker, <laughs> as in tripping, right? In tripping. All Absolutely. right, so this is very clever. So this, yeah. uh, you can tell by feel and Just by sound. And the sound, yes. Now you have the opportunity to use that dead blow rubber mallet, which I prefer, and to beat that tile down and get it down and keep maneuvering the puck as you do that until you're comfortable with the sound. Don't be afraid, you can't hurt it. While the spacers may go in easily, they practically pop out with a sweep of the hand. With the cement dry, now it's time for grout. Armin mixes his on the stiff side and uses a rubber float with plenty of pressure to force the mixture all the way down to the bottom of the joints. Then, holding the float on an angle, he moves diagonally across the face of the tile, removing as much of the excess as possible. We're going to go do first a rough wash. Basically, it cleans it off the surface of the tile, lubricates the joint a little bit. The second wash will clean the surface of the tile and the grout joint, smoothing it as we go. And it's possible we may do a third wash. As soon as this dries, we're going to use a soft, dry cloth. It's like polishing your car after you wax it. Same results. Finished? Done. Now, lest we forget, let's try to remember back to what this looked like uh, just a few hours ago before we started right. this with that, with that vinyl. Very interesting process. Uh, you began with 
the vinyl. Vinyl composition okay. tiles. And then on top of that went the thin skin, Tabby named thin after skin. Mr. Tavi. Right. And on top of that, you put the first thin coat of thin, thin set layer right on top of that. Which, then we put our our tile we, setting we mortar on that. With a teeth of a trowel, we put the mortar. And then we installed the, the tile. tile. Now you got your name and your face all over this system. Does that mean it's uh, personally guaranteed by you? That's right, Ron. I'm fully confident and I have a written 15 year warranty. All right. Hey, listen, thanks for coming by. It's always fun to have you and I always learn something. My pleasure, Ron. Call me anytime. But then again, you are a lot older than I am. <laughs> it's only years, Ron. <laughs> Last time he was here, I discovered that Armin was a songwriter and I coaxed a performance it out of him. It has magic powers, most would say. Now, I've learned he's also a poet, so I've asked for an encore. Ten years have passed, some would say, and others would only sigh, and yet some more would only sit right down and cry. Well, no such misfortune hangs over me, for ten and ten would only be a starter for a guy like me. So for the one whom my artist stole, I dedicate my life.